Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Chester, Pennsylvania on this second Sunday after Christmas. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your son who has come into the world to give us an alternate reality of who we are and why we are called and are the fullness of our purpose of this life that you have given us. Guide us, Lord, with the wisdom of your spirit that we may continue, despite what we see, know that the reality in this world is based on our faith in you. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our opening hymn, 93, Angels from the Realm of Glory. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. We will now hear our readings for the day. First reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 to 14. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. They shall, then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Psalm 84, verses 1 to 8, beginning and ending with the refrain. Happy are they who dwell in your house. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Who are on the the Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. They will climb from height to height. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Behold our defender, O God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. The second lesson is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6 and 15 to 19. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, 
that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Hear now the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the name, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, Bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Alternate realities. We hear this morning that there are three wise men who are on their way. They have observed a star. They have uh, read all of the, the uh, prophecies and, and uh, heard all the stories, no doubt. And so they are on their way to see this king. We don't really know much about the wise men. In fact, we don't even know that there were actually three of them. The Bible never really says. We just decided that three sounded like a good number, particularly since the number three is, is mentioned you know, in other aspects of the Bible, like the number seven and so forth and so on. But they decided that three sounded good, and so uh, it made for a good story. And we also don't know, um, you know what they looked like, except that they came from the east. And I think that perhaps we could probably say that they were all persons of color, or at least, at the very least, they were not Jewish or European or anything like that. Um, we don't know for certain if they were, um, you know, what the, their skin tone was, but we know that they probably did not look like the people, the persons that they were, would soon come face to face with. And this person that they would come face to face with, they did understand, was the one that had been foretold. So it didn't really matter to them what this child would look like. What mattered most was the purpose of this child's coming into the world. And so it was an epiphany for them to come face to face with something other than what they had always known. You know, in a few days, we will have the first anniversary of an epiphany event that only, say, a few of us even saw coming. I mean, sure, we expected some, something to happen. We knew there were going to be crowds, but nothing to the likes of the uprising and insurgents that occurred on January 6th of 2021. In my mind, the picture is still quite raw, and the images are painful, and they are disturbing. And if Advent means anything, we should take note that we are called to be aware of such epiphanies. But, what have we truly learned about our own alternate reality in this world under our past and current local and national leadership? What have we learned about ourselves as a country? And for those of us who have been journeying in this faith, an even deeper question is, what are we now hearing from the spirit of the God that we claim to serve? What are we being asked to understand about epiphanies? A sudden intuitive perception of an alternate reality, a moment of self-actualization, a moment of realization of one's fullness and capacities of who we are who 
we represent and what we are called to do and to be. My hope is that the epiphany is not a short-lived one. The epiphany is one that should change our lives every day forward. Once we come face to face with this alternate reality, we must be willing to accept and yet know that something needs to be changed, if at the very least our own way of thinking. We cannot be rested. We must always be ready. The Advent season, or we being an Advent people, must always be ready, be prepared. So that when these sudden, intuitive events happen in our lives, we know where we are to go, what we are to do. The three wise men were asked by Herod to come, to come back to him and let him know where this child was. But their alternate reality was that they knew that this was something that was that did not uh, was not to lead them back to something. This alternate reality was something that allowed would lead them forward, not to go back. Scripture says that they were warned in a dream to to go by an alternate route. Because ultimately, that alternate route is what leads us, helps us to move forward. Had they gone back, dare I say, we would not be here today. So the alternate reality, the epiphany, should be leading us to move forward in faith. When we realize that we are where we are because of the decisions that we make, the ones where we chose to go back or the ones that we choose to move forward, we know stuff happens. But we must go on in our lives. Just recently, I had this very interesting conversation with my oldest and dearest friend from middle school. And we talked about our children's lives and how we want to be able to help move them forward by leaving them our wisdom, which they rarely take. <laughs> by giving them some inheritance of the hard work that we have, have, have done on our own. We want to leave that with them. And yet, time and time again, they say to us, no, that's okay, we don't need that, we got that. I got it. <laughs> and we're thinking to ourselves, wait a minute. We're trying to put forth something of value in your hands so that you don't have to struggle through what it is that I struggle through. You can take this and move forward. And they say that, no, that's okay. That's okay, I, I got this. And we know they don't have it, except that they are now grown and they have to have these epiphanies on their own. And so we both agreed that we had to, what our dream was, is not their dream. What we want for ourselves is not necessarily what they want for themselves at that moment. And so we must continue to live our dream, even into our older ages. As we, be, as we get older and we get to this point of retiring in life, we must continue to live out our own faith and we have to let our children live out theirs. 
Sure, they're gonna come to us for a lot of things, mostly money, <laughs> but never, and they will come to us advice that they will not take. But soon they will come to a place in their journey in the same way that the Magi did and realize that when the Spirit told them to go by another way, that's exactly what they will do. They will learn to listen to the Spirit of God as God leads them. And all of the advice and things that they did not take from us will then come into play. And we start looking smarter because early on, we don't, we don't really know. We've not experienced any of what they've gone through. Of course not. But we must continue on in our own lives, in our dreams, the way where God has leading us. We are learning that we must continue to live our lives and our children eventually, we pray that they too will live out their dreams and they will see the path for themselves that God has prepared for them and not what we believe their path should be. We become like that magi, listening, seeking out Christ and knowing what it is that we need to do. The physical and the emotional journey provides many of these experiences in our lives. They reveal and they guide us to places of both joy as well as pain. But it is when it is coupled with the, when the physical is coupled with the spiritual journey that it's the faith and the relationship we have in Christ that helps us to believe in what we are doing. It is that relationship that we have that helps us to understand our purpose. And that purpose will manifest itself in God's glory for our benefit. But we must first take the journey. And in the same way that a parent is pleased that their child has had the first of many physical and emotional epiphanies, God is also pleased with us. He's so much more pleased when we begin to learn to listen and to hear and to understand epiphanies, even the ones we experienced almost a year ago. So what of this person, Herod? And who are the Herods in our own lives? The ones who want to steal the joy for themselves. They ask us questions about who and where and what because they want these things for themselves or perhaps even out of fear of losing what they think they have. That's an epiphany that this Herod doesn't get and so many Herods that we encounter don't get because the authority that they, they believe they had is only given because God has allowed that authority to happen. But when they realize who the true authority is, then they hopefully will receive their own epiphany. Where is the child who was born king of the Jews? Herod's perception of that question, of course, is different from our understanding what it is today. But what in fact is our own truth? Christ is a truth for us. As Christians, what realities in our life must we face in order that we be reconciled spiritually to the epiphany that is Christ? every day of our lives, not just one day out of the year, not just one visit, but every day. And not just in church, at work, at home, on vacation.
all of the flights that have been canceled because people decided that they were going to visit someone at a distance and people are stranded. Is that not an epiphany? We knew the situation before when we leave out, our out of our houses and when we take these opportunities or chances, however you look at it, if we're not fully prepared, then we find ourselves in yet another epiphany. The journey we each must undertake will lead us in the same direction as the Magi we read about in Matthew today. As we approach the epiphany that came with the birth of Christ. And what could be more commonplace than the birth of a child? The prophet Isaiah calls him wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. And I've often wondered how it is that the Magi knew and believed this from the onset of their own journey. When the disciples' own perception of who Jesus was would not be made fully known to them until what others had created or believed him to be. And when it was challenged and put to rest by the manifestation of Christ's resurrection and ascension. Until then, the question the disciples were constantly trying to answer was, who is Jesus? Somehow the Magi knew. What does it mean for us? What does Jesus' presence here mean for us? Would a conquering king relish not this kind of power and authority? Regardless of the world's perception, Jesus did not accept the social construct that the society had created about him. And if Jesus had accepted this reflected modification of God's gift and accepted the world's perception of king and lived into what Herod feared him to be, it would have affirmed that he was in fact of this world, forever controlled and forever manipulated. And that's where we are. Our own wisdom. says that we are not of this world and we cannot be controlled and manipulated by it. That's why they were willing to take the alternate route and not go back and move forward in their journey home. And are we not in a journey towards home? At home with Christ is the journey that we must take. We must remain true to what God has called us to be. Jesus remained true to the Savior that he was called to be. And that same spirit must be within us. Jesus, in every aspect of his life, refuses to fit into the mechanism of the hierarchical culture. <coughs> Whether it be <coughs> in the religious realm, in the business realm, the realm of the community, so that when we see the uprising, we know what we must do. We must not allow ourselves to be fit into this hierarchical nature. Conforming to society would have been too, too easy for us. That's the easy way. We must be steadfast to the truth. That is being the, the spiritual truth of the spiritual soul that seeks after God day in and day out. So that when we are encountered with the world, with the Herods of the world, and the pilots of the world, and, the, and, the, and the, all of the leaders of the world who continue to want to control who we are, 
we know that we have been called to an alternate route. It is the same spirit that we're born with, but we need to be able to realize that, we, but we have yet to realize it at birth. Because to be born into this physical world requires that we interact with it. We have no choice. And we must interact with whatever it offers us. Reaching the true self is the journey of learning how to discern the world's perceptions, the external self reflected upon us by others. If I believed everything that people said about me, I wouldn't be here with you today. How we respond to the world's stimuli reflects our perceived reality. We must decide how we are going to perceive society for ourselves, and whether that society is going to control who we are and what we do. When Herod asked the question of the Magi and wanting them to come back, and they, they nodded their head and they said yes. But they went on to see that star. And when they got the message to move on, that's what they did. Because sometimes we have to kind of nod our head and not play the game because we know what God has called us to do. We must refuse to play the game that the world is trying to draw us into. The experience of epiphanies in our life are those face-to-face -face encounters with the world. But our journey is always with Christ. Realize that we have to be more of the believers that we say we are and choose to take a journey, even as we continue to ask the question when the time comes like the Magi who discern this meaning and refuse to play into the world's hands, the chaos that we see, the, the, um, the, the massive numbers of people who continually want to do what they want and be where they want. And that's okay, but you just have to be willing to accept whatever the consequence is. And that's okay too. And then you, you but you keep moving, you keep moving. We must be able to discern between what is reflected on us and what the world wants to and what we know of our, who we are ourselves. So I say to you today, the epiphany of Christ is a journey in this physical life that will often require us to take the alternate route. The one that leads us away from the Herods and the world's perceptions. We are reminded today about the Magi that these wise persons refuse to play. And sometimes we will forget this wisdom. But discernment in life doesn't mean we must conform to it. Because that's when the epiphanies come. The good news is that when we do forget God love, God's love reproves, but it never condemns. And our true acts of reconciliation will always redeem us back to God and will resurrect us and restore us until once again we are face to face, offering our gifts and living every day like it's an epiphany. a sudden intuitive perception or insight into the reality that is the birth of Christ. The epiphany for us 
is that salvation is every day in spite of what the world's perception is. We must begin to journey and take the alternate route. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. Together, let us reaffirm our faith as found in the Nicene Creed, page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Prayers of the People, Form 4. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We recommend to you your mercy. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we continue to pray for this church, for this community, and for the world. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for the wisdom and for the epiphanies that we must face in this world. And the reminder that your son is our savior every day of our lives. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your peace, and thank you for this understanding. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son, accept and fulfill our petitions. We pray not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. The 
peace of God, which passes all understanding, may keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of Christ and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May it be with you this day now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with the universal sign of peace. 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 Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day of the week overcame death and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat it, do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of Christ, and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May it be with you and remain with you this day, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, 124. What star is this? Verses 1, two, one two, 3, and 5. rejoicing in the epiphany of Christ in our lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks.